one of my great-grandmothers came over from Germany in the early 20th century. So, I feel like I shouldn't laugh about this. But every time I hear this word, I really think of space balls. <laughs> Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. Today I am drinking Scuttlebutt Brewing Company's Dark Horse Black Lager. It is a Schwartz beer. That is a black beer, literally. Use the Schwartz, Luke. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I uh, shall not promise that I will not make references, further references to that, but uh, yeah, I, I simply shall not. <laughs> Schwartz beer. Schwartz means black. Black beer. In this particular case, a lager, which is traditionally what a Schwartz beer was. Most historic German beer styles are lagers. That's just what they are. Um, Schwartz beer typically, historically, also meant a very smoky beer because the process of getting the malts dark enough to be a black malt meant there was going to be a lot of smoke involved. There was going to be a lot of smoking of the malts, and so you would expect that smoke to come through in the finished product. Um, this being a more modern uh, Schwartz beer, and also considering the can does not make note at all of the smoky character or the purpose of this beer being smoky, I'm guessing this uses a more modern uh, malt roasting techniques, the indirect heat, uh, smokeless heats, etc., to produce a simply a dark and smoke-free, or a dark malt that is smoke-free. Um, so I'm expecting this to be more along the lines of a tr traditional lager, uh, smooth, uh, drinkable. Well, I mean, not that smokiness doesn't affect drinkability, but not smoky, right? That's what I'm expecting this to be. And indeed, as I smell it, there's there's no smoke to it. There's just that, that really nice, typical craft lager, kind of sweet, round, smooth, um, maybe some vegetable in there. Deep down, there might be a hint of of licorice or like black licorice or um, molasses, but it's it's way deep down. Uh, and that's really the only dark flavors that I can smell. Perhaps a little bit of vegetable. Not sure. That's relatively, I, I tend to smell that like sweet vegetables, root vegetables when I'm smelling lagers. Not that I'm necessarily smelling carrots or beets, but that's what the things remind me of. I've uh, lapsed ineloquent about that in the past. Anyways, let's uh, dive in and see how she drinks. Mm. Smooth. There's plenty here, but none of it's super big or shouty. Um, it's that really nice lager smoothness, subtly sweet, a um, little bit earthy. Uh, but then as it finishes, there is perhaps the slightest hint of smoke, but it might just be from darkly roasted grains. That's probably what it is. Um, and then just kind of a, a nice, nice, subtle, very well balanced hop finish that kind of wraps everything up and tells you, okay, we're, we're done, time to take another drink. Perhaps a bit of chocolate in there. Yeah. Um, maybe mixed dark chocolate and milk chocolate. There's, there's parts of both, parts of each in there. I'm gonna finish this, finish this glass. Um, yeah, lagers are just so drinkable. I, I think it's just the nature of that particular beer. It's not that things are muddy. They're just they're smooth. There's, there's no real, um, loud parts. 
it's, it's not a spike and you know this is the the thing you're advertising in the beer no it's just kind of nice and smooth and that's that's what lagers are good for they're they tend to be really drinkable um, you don't have to ponder them they're not shouting for your attention they're just they're just simple and and drinkable and enjoyable and not not simplistic not muddy not boring just just simple and and for that reason they are enjoyable in their way for what they are i tend in my friend's group to be the the beer snob the aficionado the ones who the one who brings the beers and and typically when I'm trying to think of a beer to bring to a celebration, then I'm thinking of uh, uh, an outstanding, a, a special beer that has some unique characteristics or qualities that make it stand out. So, you know, those tend to be the bigger beers, the the more special beers. And, and I don't want to fall prey to thinking that lagers aren't big and special. They're just special in their own way. They are, you know, if you had the same group of friends getting together for years, and and you've been drinking beers together for years you're probably going to settle back on a lager of some sort because it's not about the beer it's about the friends and lagers are just so perfect for that because they are they are what they are they're simple they're smooth they're very enjoyable they're people pleasers um they're kind of beer beers you know the, the great american lager the american light lager which this is not at all. There are far better beers than that, and this is one of them. Um, this is a, a, a great German dark lager <laughs> in a, from an American brewery. Um, anyways, yeah, I mean, that, that's what lagers are to me. That's, that's how I see them. I see them as smooth people pleasers that, that really play well with others and don't have to be all about themselves. They are backup singers, really good backup singers like this one. And she's singing to me, so I should probably drink. Anyways, this is me, Matthew. I have been drinking and enjoying Scuttlebutt Brewing's Dark Horse Black Lager. And I'll catch y'all on the flip side.